Autopsy 3 is a graphical user interface that overlays the Sleuth Kit. The Sleuth Kit is a popular forensics program for Linux that runs on the command line. There is an Autopsy 2 graphical user interface that runs on Linux, but it hasn't been updated in some time. The current version, Autopsy 3, runs on Windows exclusively. This version of Autopsy is 313, and it's running on Windows 7 64-bit. Also, the virtual machine has been given 4 gigabytes of RAM because running the standard 2 gigabytes can result in a low memory error when autopsy is parsing large files. It may help to note that we've created an autopsy cases folder in documents to store the cases in. To start, click on create a new case. and choose the folder that you're going to keep your cases in as the base directory. In our case, that's Autopsy Cases in the Documents folder. Autopsy will create a folder with the case name inside of the base directory. You can optionally provide a case number and the examiner's name. Once you complete these steps, the case has been created and you can add what's called data sources to the case. The data source is simply the disk images that you want to analyze with autopsy. So we're going to select the image file. You can also provide disk drives or other file sources. Image file is used when you've made a copy of a disk and stored it in a format such as the DD format, in case or FTK. We're going to browse to the folder that contains the image that we made. And we've gotten an image from one of the forensics practice websites, in this case the Rhino USB. And it was made from a USB image. It doesn't have a file system on it. So um, that contains the images. So the disk space that is on this DD is largely unallocated space. There is a file system, but not that contains the files that we're going to find. Once you've picked the image file, go ahead and click Next, and then choose the modules that you're going to use to examine the image. So we're going to go ahead and use all the default modules. You can get more modules by going to the autopsy website and looking at some of the modules that have been donated by the community. So once you add the data source, autopsy is going to start analyzing the disk and you can see the progress down in the bottom right corner. You can click finish to close out the create case window. And you'll see the image or images here in the data sources tab. While autopsy is parsing this image, you'll see the progress start to move towards 100% and the results will be populated over here. Also, the carved files will be put into the carved files folder. Autopsy can look at the file systems that are on the image and grab the files that are in the file system, including files that have been deleted from the file system. Typically when files are deleted, the actual data itself is not removed from the hard drive, but the entry for the file in the file system is marked as deleted, and the space is allowed to be used by the operating system to store other files. But it may take a long time for the operating system to actually reuse that space. Autopsy can go through the disk image and it looks for the file headers and footers that indicate the start and end of a file. For example, a JPEG file typically starts with FFD8, FFE0, or possibly FFD8, FFE1, and depending on the type of JPEG. And you'll also see this 4A464946, which is the JFIF letters seen here at the top of the header. And that helps Autopsy know that this is the start of an image. 
the end of the image is going to contain FFD9. So once Autopsy finds the matching ending, it can carve out the file and represent it as a JPEG. In other words, it reconstructs the file from the bits on the disk that used to make up the file contents when it was part of the file system. So once the files have been found in the file system or carved, they'll appear over here in the carved files areas. So there's a few text images, Microsoft Word document, a JPEG image, several of those actually, and a couple of GIFs. For the image files in particular, you can click on the thumbnail tab and you'll see a thumbnail of the images. In the thumbnails, you can right click and say view in an external viewer. And the default program registered to deal with these kinds of files will open up. On Linux, you can use the display program. On Windows, the Windows Photo Viewer or a number of other programs will work. You can also look at larger pictures of the thumbnails if they're available. And back in the table tab, you can do the same with the files. The preview will appear at the bottom under the media tab. For text files, you can see the text that makes up the files as well. So for example, if you click on the Microsoft Word document, you can see the text that makes up the Word document. It's often useful to extract the files from the image and save them as the original file type. Now you may not know the original name of the file because that information is kept in the file system. And for files that have to be carved out of the disk, a lot of times there's no entry in the file system. If there was, then they wouldn't have had to have been carved necessarily. The file system information could have been used to recover the file. So Autopsy will give the files a name. You can extract the files from the image by right clicking and saying extract files giving the file a name and saving it off to a disk. 